Welcome everybody to another episode of Wiki Weekends. I am your host, Lucas Holland, and I am joined, as always, by the illustrious Carl Smallwood. I guess I have to give you a bit of a nicer intro this time to stop you being mad at me. Oh, are we talking about One Piece again? No, 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 I've picked just to the <laughs> post on um, some piece of bad television shows that I know that you want to talk about and I'm beating you to it. Oh, no, okay, cool. Let's talk about bad TV. I love bad TV. <laughs> so, Carl, we are going to be talking about the British TV show Don't Tell the Bride. Oh, I love Don't Tell the Bride. <laughs> Let's go. But I was like, I, I know that Carl's going to be slightly mad that I picked this no, one. No, I, I, I just want to talk about it. Okay, okay. Man, I, I love terrible TV. Let's go. Yeah, and it was literally just, you know, I was editing a video over the weekend for Fat Fiend, and you mentioned Don't Tell the Bride in it. I was like, we still haven't done an actual episode on Don't Tell the Bride. Having fun? Why the hell have you sent us here? <laughs> why did you send us here, though? Seriously, why? So, people, Americans, have probably, there's no doubt a version of this in America, mm -hmm. but I think the reason why British reality TV is so... I prefer it. It's because the stakes are so much lower. The stakes are so much lower. So low. They're, They're so, so low. low. And people give such a huge <laughs> shit, which makes it so much more entertaining. So tell people about Don't Tell the Bride. I, yeah, Don't Tell the Bride is maybe one of those with like slightly higher stakes because this is about it's somebody's wedding. wedding day. Yeah, but it is a British reality television series, the premise of which being that it surrounds couples being awarded money to fund their wedding ceremony. However, I'm, all, I'm, I'm already laughing because I'm, I'm thinking about <laughs> of all the fucking things to mention that you can put clips in of. Uh, however, every aspect of the ceremony must be organised by the groom, with no contact with the bride. Surely, can it, Hilton Safety would say you cannot skydive out of a plane in a wedding dress? Right. So, as a guy. I find, like, the premise is a little bit sexist. It's a bit sexist that, like, oh, the groom is fucking useless. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't like the idea of, like, men being portrayed as completely useless, but the guys on that show are <laughs> fucking useless. Kaylee has her heart set on 150 guests. Simon's inviting two sets of parents, the best man, and one bridesmaid. A total of six. The show provides evidence that some grooms are fucking yeah. useless. I know it's a stereotype and it's an unfair and offensive stereotype about men, but there are just some guys out there who are just useless because they've never had to do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. And those are the exact kind of people who get sought out for this show, and it is glorious. And that's the thing, right, is it's reality TV, like... They are pick cherry picking people that they know in like auditions and stuff, like are more likely to just be like absolutely useless. They are putting people in scenarios that are like constructed by producers and stuff, like to make for the most drama. There's exactly. stuff behind the scene. There's a few things behind the scenes as well they do to massage the truth of what's happening to make for more compelling television, which you'll no doubt get to. But I just love how it's just. This is, like, Kerry from, like, Southampton. And here's her boyfriend. He's just in with lads playing FIFA. Like, woo, 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 woo. And you're, you know this is a good one. I watch this in the same for the same reason that I read, like, Reddit threads on, like, am I the arsehole of. Yeah. There is something an ex-girlfriend of mine told me about where. Where she, like, I was at, she was telling me about exes that she'd had before because I'm very tidy. And like, I do things like I just wake up and go do the pots. And I was like, is that just not a thing? So, Carl, the bar is on the floor and some guys still trip over it. And I will <laughs> always remember that line. Just guys not wiping their ass and stuff. Yeah, that was one that you illuminated me on on a podcast once that I was like, there's no way. No, it's a real thing. It's good to watch the thing. Okay, when you're feeling a bit bad about yourself, it's like, <laughs> at least I'm not this fucking useless. At least I'm not totally inept, yeah. But, and then as well, inept in both your abilities as an adult human and also as a partner. It's like, you know, I have my flaws. I'm not a perfect human being or anything. But as you say, you just every now and then hear shit like that of like, guys can't wipe their asses clean, literally. And you're like, oh, maybe I'm not doing too badly. Or like, don't tell the bride where it's like, um, uh, okay, so what kind of wedding would your um, fiance like? Is like, I don't know. 
<laughs> You've never talked about it's, it. It's always nearly every episode of like, oh well, you know, um, Mrs. Bride, what would you like to see for your wedding? It's like, oh, I'd like X, Y, and Z, and then straight to like a shot cut of the the guy being like. I really think she'd want the exact fucking opposite. Every princess needs to get married in a castle. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> They're here to see the venue for Britain's biggest tattoo convention. It, it does just make for very compelling television. It does. So go on, tell me more about it though, because I think it was, uh, I want to say it was a BBC thing. BBC but... 3, um, and it first prem- premiered on November 8th, 2007. Um <laughs> In February 2012, it was announced that the show had been nominated for a Rose Door Award at the Factual Entertainment Show. Uh, it's not best, factual. For best factual entertainment show, sorry. It almost got a Rose Door for that. What? Yeah. Due to the impending shutdown of BBC Three as a television service, the ninth series of the program was moved to BBC One. Got promoted all the way from like third division to first, girl. Yeah, they knew. went straight to BBC One. It's yeah. just such a good show. Oh, okay. And then BBC dropped Don't Tell the Bride and it was picked up for its 2016 series by Sky One. And then yes. it moved to E4 in 2017 for another series later that year. Yeah, I think um, because... I think E4, Channel 4, they made it more drama-driven. The original BBC Three series, is like, they felt very down-to-earth, and yes, there were clearly, like, as we say, constructed elements to put drama into the scenarios more, but, mm-hmm. like, you could tell for the most part it was just, here, we've given you 12 grand, let's see what this fucking moron comes up with. What my favourite bit is, well, it reminds me of like when they make um, uh, David Attenborough documentaries. Do you know what? Mm. You see the behind the scenes stuff and they ask them, like, is it hard filming animal footage and knowing you can't step in? And like, there's a really great clip that went around recently of like, I think the Attenborough crew built a path for some penguins. Because yes. they said like, there was a bunch yeah. of penguins that got lost from their, co- and their, their babies were there. And we're not allowed to interfere, but we thought, well, we're not going to interfere, but we can at the very least guide the penguins to a path that exists that they're not aware is there mm-hmm. and we can save the penguins that way i wonder if it's the same for like the guys on this and what the husbands <laughs> are do you know what my wife would love do you think the producer like we can't step in we yeah. can't interfere with the reality Don't do of it. The sh- you've got to <laughs> let this relationship fall apart it's like, should we step in and help it's like i'm sorry we can't you know again with all reality tv show like I know there are like people that genuinely like have some suffering from this and relationships do but you know, I say people are fucking morons in the sense that, like, they don't know what they're doing in this aspect. I'm sure there are other things in life that they're, you know, more fine tuned for, but, like, it's clearly guys that are dropped in the deep end with no fucking paddle that don't know what they're doing. These people should be here. I know, and I wanted them all here, but I couldn't afford to get them out here. I couldn't afford to do that, Katie. If I could, I would have done and obviously people out there, they must be very happy, but they, you can tell that these guys are like, they abs- they are chomping at the bit to get away from their missus. Probably remember it's a wedding. Do you know what I mean? It's not a joke. That's it? That's a pretty big rule. Happy with that. So I've, I've literally got three weeks to do whatever I want. <laughs> no, you haven't. I've, you've just basically given me a pass. Because like, again, one of my favorite parts of the show is when they get the best man in mm-hmm. to help. And like, oh, the, the wife will go away, or the fiancé will go away with the kids for a weekend, and the best man will come out. And he always comes out, he's always got like a six-pack under the arm. First time I've ever lived on my own was when I was with Laura. This is the exciting part, for spending time with your, your mates and having a drink. These show's format consists of a couple who are giving £12,000 or 14000 in the BBC One and E4 versions to mm-hmm. spend on a wedding. And I believe even at the time... That's not a lot of money for a wedding. No, even in, like, the BBC Three versions back in, like, 2007, a lot of the time they'd be like, oh, yeah, the average cost of a wedding is about £20,000. Yeah, and people at home probably think, well, £12,000 is a lot of money. The thing you need to keep in mind is this is every aspect of the wedding. This isn't, Mm -hmm. this is the venue, the dress, the bridesmaid dresses, the groom's, like, outfit and all, like, for the groomsmen, transport to and from the venue, hair and makeup, catering, entertainment the stag do the the hen do 
everything, and it all has to be planned in you that three weeks. Almost always see that twelve grand disappear immediately, instantly. Just like the wedding dress alone is like for some brides two grand, and for others like hundred quid, and they've for like they've and, just not given a shit. And that's one of the, the great things about watching the show. Of they're set up for failure. The guys have no yeah, chance. Like yeah, even yeah. if they were competent, they'd have no chance. Even if it wasn't some fucking knobhead from Southampton who doesn't know what he's doing, <laughs> he'd have no chance because they'll say like again they always do that great bit of they, they take the bride around to show what she'd want mm-hmm. and I always, it's always the same of ah, you know I just want something small something simple something low key and they take us like a 200 person barn yeah it's always like these super extravagant extravagant like barns and shit where it's like, oh, rental for this for the day was ten grand, and then yeah, and she'll say, you know, something simple, something like, you no, know, low something key like, like this, this. <laughs> it's and like it's this. like what a two hundred person wedding and on twelve grand. They always take them to like fancy shops for the uh, dress uh, trying on, like where it's clearly every single dress is like five grand, and they, yep. you know, they're plowing them with all like the free champagne and the cake and stuff, and they're like, oh yeah, something like this would be ideal, and it's like. Oh, what's the price? I go, oh, it's like £5,900. And you're like, that's half your budget. How is he going to do that? To some guys' credit, they're really, really good at it. And I think some of the them one, are, yeah. The one that me and you like, I think we watched it together, It's because this is a thing me and Lucas do in our free time, folks, <laughs> is that guy who sets his wedding up to be a race. So him and his wife are very competitive. Like They met at like a climbing hall or something like that and he says we're already competitive so i want my wedding day to be a race a literal race down the aisle mm-hmm. so he buys like a bunch of like inflatables that are going to go all the way down on he hires out a field and for his wife's wedding dress he sends her a five pound tutu oh yeah and he sends yeah. all the bridesmaids like these five pound tutus and like you have a moment where the bridesmaids are grilling him down the phone i mean she'll have to just trust me no she chris she won't wear it can we change it can we swap the tights? There's a huge, big, inflatable thing. And he stood there in a tuxedo morph suit. Yeah. <laughs> and he, they race down the aisle, they get to the end, and they get there, and their entire family's cheering and laughing, and everyone joins in. And she's got a huge, big smile on her face. They have and the best just... time, yeah. Do you, Charlotte, take Chris to be your husband, to have and to hold from this day forward? I will. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> and then... Off camera, he went and he bought her a nice wedding and paid for makeup, so she goes and gets changed, and then mm-hmm. comes into the event after looking fantastic. It's not ideal going over bouncy castles and doing an obstacle course before you get married, but actually, he's absolutely smashed it in the end. Not everyone goes not every well. Guy, like... not, not every guy deserves the benefit of the doubt, but no. that one sticks in my mind, because that guy had a very clear vision of what he wanted on his and wedding And he still day. got shit from people until they saw what he was planning, yeah. So you've only, I think he even says, you've only seen a part of what I've got planned. Of course it's going to look bad out of context. Then you've got other ones where it's like, he spent half the money hiring out like Thought Park to take her on a ride in the rain on her own in a wedding <laughs> dress. And it's like, oh, no. She's just like solo on a roller coaster in the rain in a wedding dress. Like, I don't want to do this. I'm not going on a ride. Well, where do you think we are? Fort Park. We're at Fort Park. We're actually at Fort Park. Why would we be at Fort Park? Because he's a prick. Mom! The one that always, like, throws me off is, same with a lot of reality TV, where if you watch enough episodes in a row, you know it's a trend, but mm-hmm. a lot of the guys actually have some interesting novel ideas, which is presumably how they get on the show. But yeah, like, yeah. Every single woman who's on the show always wants basically the same cookie-cutter wedding. But the thing is, a lot of the time, I don't think they do. Because you kind of watch the start of the episodes and they talk about, like, these nice individual ideas that they have and then they always take them to the same like wedding dress places and the same venues regardless of what they say mm-hmm. and it's almost as if there, there is that kind of like mild level of like brainwashing of like don't you want this big nice like elegant fancy wedding like everybody else has like don't you want what you've like seen on all of the, like nice tv shows and stuff like this big fancy wedding and like the the, the dream wedding that you always get told of when you're a little girl. and I definitely think there is some meddling going on there. But like one of the things I appreciate is some of the guys, because they've got no budget relative to what a wedding costs, and they've got three weeks, which is not enough time to hire a venue, for example. A lot of the guys get really creative with it. Of You're not going to be able to hire out a church with three weeks warning. 
Unless someone dies. Most people book their wedding venues, like, at least a year in advance. Yeah, and I distinctly recall one guy who was like, well, she always wants to get married in a castle. <laughs> and there's a local castle near me that's, like, half destroyed. Mm. But it's still a castle. And he calls up the council and says, can I hire out your castle for private bookings? Like, well... No one's ever asked that, but yeah, sure. So for £4,000, Ivan has hired a patch of grass in some ruins for his wedding. The smash cut to the next one where it's like, we're going to have a wedding and a ceremony in the woods, and then it's like <laughs> in the morning where like, they're trying to construct it and they've got like one string set of lights and they're like, we don't know what we're doing, we don't know what we're doing, we figured it'd just be easy. Getting married in three hours. That does not look like my dream wedding venue. It's a fucking joke, isn't it? And then it's just like a gazebo in a field at the end of the day. The one that gets is like, you, as I said, they, they, you know, they, the, the producers can't step in and help. Mm -hmm. Where they like call them up on the wedding day and they'll say, like, so how are we getting to the venue? And you see the guy go, we get a taxi. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, it's like, you're not going to get a taxi. It's like, on my wedding day? <laughs> what do you mean you need hair and makeup? Can you not just do that yourself? Like, so that's always one. Hair and makeup and transportation are always the ones that people that get people. And the prioritization of the hen and the stag do's. Okay, so Lucas, talk about the hen and the stag do's. So, it's just so many of the time, if people aren't familiar with what hen and stag parties are. Ba like, bachelor party, bachelorette party for Americans. Exactly, yeah. The amount of times where it's like the stag party is like this three-day bender <laughs> over the weekend where they've like hired out a venue, bought a bunch of alcohol, like go on a bunch of like events and like they always do like, you know, the Zorbin and shit like that. And then it's like, oh, so uh, what have you done for the hen party? And it's like, oh, we've sent we've sent you like down the road to the pub with a bottle of wine behind the bar or something. Lucas, never forget <laughs> the one where the guy takes he takes like fifteen of his closest friends to Spain, oh, yeah. and the bride and the bridesmaid calls him up and asks him where he is. He went, well, are you on your are you on your stag? He went, yeah, it's at a local pub, <laughs> and he's in Spain. <laughs> And then what's the thing you told me they do to, like, massage this truth? Yeah, it's that they essentially limit the budgets on the, the hen and the stag parties, and they give them almost next to no money for, like, the max they're allowed to spend on the hen do. But they can spend whatever they want on the stag. Yeah, so it is one of those things, again, of, like, it is manufactured drama. They go... Well, that means I've got five grand for my stag do. This is our stag do, but it's going to be research to see course, what we can do you. and we bring Vegas you. back to Norfolk so we can have a Vegas wedding here. Also is what he does make for very compelling television, where it's a bunch of bridesmaids crying in a pub, yelling at them <laughs> down the phone. Because the best bit of every episode is when the bridesmaids call up the best man and yell at him. Mm. And the, the best man's like, well, it's not, it's, I'm just here to help him. I can't tell him what to do. It's his money. Lucas, do you remember at the moment where me and you, we just lost it? We were watching it at my house. And it's that one where the guy is just like, he does not give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, he walks in to buy the wedding dress and he's like, okay, how much is that one? Under a quid, bish bosh, job done, get it packed up. Mm -hmm. He goes like, how much for this, this, he does it all. And then on the day of the wedding when everything's falling apart in the background, you see the best man pick up and start drinking an entire bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> just he knows it's just gone to he shit. He knows it and there's nothing he can do and you just see a best man. You know, he just picks up a bottle of Jack Daniels and just starts opens necking it, it and just starts necking it at ten o'clock in the morning because he knows what the day's gonna be. <laughs> Something I wasn't aware of, um it says all the mo the series mostly features heterosexual couples. One episode broadcast in twenty ten featured a gay couple and another in November 2011 featured a lesbian couple both preparing for their civil partnerships. Yeah, I guess just like the format would be difficult to do that. Like, cause I, I do remember those episodes where it's like, don't tell the bride. And it was the addition with like a gay couple. Mm -hmm. And like, then you have to have the gay couple to say, okay, so which one of you is the woman? Which one of you is playing the role of the inept groom and which one of you is playing the role of like the bride? I guess, yeah, it's, it's very much a show set up, as you say, in that kind of sexist trope of like aren't men useless in the relationship like this show is basically are the straights okay the tv show <laughs> the is answer that. is no one more that i've got to mention because like the clip is legendary mm -hmm. and it's the guy who's like hey do you know what i'm gonna spend all my money on the wedding on i'm gonna spend it buying a skate ramp a cheap hen do means the boys can splash out on the really important things 
you know, like a couple of skate ramps for two and a half grand. So much of our relationship revolves around skateboarding and skating together and all this. And then like, she's going to ride down the aisle on a skateboard and it gets to the day and she's like, I've never ridden a skateboard in my life. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm not having that. Or well, we figure out as an audience at the end of the day, like essentially he likes wearing vans. Yeah, and that's it. But he and he sends like her wedding shoes, and it's a pair of vans. Yeah, but she's got a wet. I think remember they're in Cleethorpes, and he has the wedding on Cleethorpes Beach. <laughs> so she just has like all this shitty, like hepatitis ridden sand on her dress. With just fucking half pipe in the background that neither of them can skate because on. Because he can't skateboard, but he spends five grand on a half pipe. It's just great when she's just like the bemusement. Not eat, like, I don't even think it's anger from her. I think she's it's just bemusement of like, but we don't skateboard. It's clearly one of those things that he bases a lot of his personality around and she just doesn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. So there's another episode like that where um, uh, the girl's like, well, there's one thing I really hope he doesn't do for my wedding. He's got this really annoying nickname for me that I don't like, where he calls me his little piggy. Every year, he just gets me pig stuff, and yeah. I don't like it. And then the guy's like, oh, I'm going to make the entire wedding about pigs. Because she loves the fact that I call her little piggy. He holds the wedding on a pig farm with pig <laughs> shit. And then he buys a high heels, and he has to walk that. He's like, what were you thinking? Pig poo. Not very pleasant, not what you want to smell on your wedding day. It's gone to the extremes. Now I just want to get this over with. That's been enough, and I hope you've enjoyed all of like the dumb clips that I've mentioned. Because this is like it's this is a wiki episode where it just exists to put in dumb clips that don't tell the bride. Just it is. You can find full episodes on YouTube. Go watch them. They're so good. <laughs> they are very compelling. Yeah, it, very it's fun. like the bar is on the floor, guys. <laughs> The bar is on the floor and some guys still fall over it. As long as you can do better than that, you're going to be all right. Because, like, watch this show as a guy and realise these guys all got laid and got girlfriends and fiancés and wives. As long as you can get over what the bar is that they're dropping, you're all right. As long as you don't, like, summon your wife to be to a fucking pig farm to ruin shit. And she still marries him. <laughs> it's... It's like the guy who makes his wife just fucking walk a wolf. And she's like, I don't like wolves. He's like, but I want a wolf. And in the future, if you want more clips of dumb reality TV shows, remember to subscribe and just give us like a like and ring that notification bell and all that jazz. And I hope you have enjoyed this episode of dumb, stupid reality TV show fun. Thank you very much. <laughs> don't tell the bride. What a show. What a show.